Hi, everyone. Welcome to episode 262 of the All Dolphins podcast with Omar and Pupar on this Tuesday, April 9th. Happy birthday to my father, who will not watch this, but happy birthday nonetheless. Happy 91. Love you, Dad. Uh, today, we're going to be talking Tart, Tehran, and Tua, the three T's. Before we do that, we will do a very quick history lesson and a birthday shout out. We will start with the history lesson. Number 62, the Dolphins have made the 62nd overall selection in the NFL draft twice. Those things, by the way, I have to look up. I don't remember the, the draft selection number by, by heart, unlike the jersey numbers. So one of them was a offensive lineman by the name of Jim Urbanic in 1968. Don't know that he ever became anything in the NFL uh, in terms of a major contributor. The other one was one that Omar and I both are familiar with because it happened in 2011. He was a running back with size, and the biggest red flag immediately should have been that the biggest highlight he had and from college was him hurling over a defender, even though he was six feet. Reagan Malia. Who? No. No. That's not... No. Who are we talking about? From Kansas State, Daniel Thomas. Oh, okay. Yeah. He was a finesse back at six feet, 230, whatever he was. He was a big dude, but he was a finesse back who didn't break tackles and never really panned out for the Dolphins as a second round pick. Yeah, that one didn't work out, but it was still better. He had a better career than I think uh Kalen Bellage. The Dolphins oh, and, yeah. and and power backs didn't didn't exactly pan out very well in their drafting history. But it really shouldn't be that hard to uh select backs. Um I, I'm I'm of the opinion that backs and cornerbacks, you should find those like like you find quarters in your couch because every athlete is five foot ten 200 pounds 190 to 200 pounds in america um you know find somebody with good footwork shouldn't be that hard but here we are yeah i think the one that that comes to mind who actually did pan out although not for a very long time was jay ajayi but he came in with have what he was very good for that one year in 2016, but he came in with a history of knee issues and that became his downfall as an NFL player. Degenerative knee problems, bone on bone knees. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why no team touched him until the fifth round. Um, even though he, he didn't come out of the draft injured, but yeah. Th and this is part of the reason why in the draft process, when you find players slide for some unknown reason, um, it's either because they're probably bat boo crazy, um, have emotional issues, or have a degenerative heart condition, knee condition that, you know, and that doesn't mean that you shouldn't take a chance or, 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 or they got into some legal troubles. Like remember when Adam Godchow? fell to the fifth round, even though a lot of people projected him as a higher draft pick, but he had like some baby mama drama issues. Oh, yeah. It, it, you know, you know, I, I believe there is a defensive tackle from Texas who just got a DWI. Yeah. 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 No, no, I know. The, uh, Tav uh, Tavandre Sweat. Uh, like, and I say this all the time when you are a draft prospect and I, and I, and understand that I, I like do media training for draft prospects or have in, in my past. When you are a draft prospect and you know you've got three months literally from the NFL combine to the NFL draft, do not pick up the joint. Do not drink alcohol. If you drink alcohol, do not drive in the vehicle. Do not drive the vehicle. Yes, sir. Do not, if you got issues with a baby mama who thinks that she's about to get a big fat check and and you're trying to leave her out of it, don't go visit her. Don't go see her. Like, keep your nose clean. Like, because there's so much money on the line. But you, there's always one guy. Kids are going to be kids. And that's the issue. And the deal with those things is, there is no steadfast rule that because this red flag has shown up, stay away, stay away, stay away, because he may turn out never have an issue in the NFL. Yep. Or he may turn out to be one thing after another. There is, again, there is no steadfast rule, no generalization that can be made. Stay away from guys like that because you just don't know. For example, the idea of stay away from guys with like red flags medically yep. from their career, 
Thurman Thomas was one an example, had a me medical red flags. Frank Gore. Frank Gore. Gore. Bo yep. Both ACLs played, what, 17 years, 18 years? You just don't know. And, and I bring that up because I wrote a story for SI.com slash NFL slash Dolphins on uh, Layatu Latu, the edge defender, pass rusher from uh, – that's a mouthful. Yeah. Uh, I'm almost hoping the Dolphins don't draft him just because I don't have to have to pronounce his name too often. But he's kind of like – he's got a medical red flag uh, because of a neck injury he sustained while at the University of Washington. and But it's very similar. He actually retired for a bit just like another UCLA – alum Jalen Phillips and how's that panned out so far very well mm -hmm. so. um yeah and and he's one of those uh Polynesian players I should I say Polynesian or Samoan I can't remember which what the proper term since you're going to bring that up I'm sorry to interrupt but it's Polynesian and in fact it was a college Polynesian player of the year in 2023 and we should know Omar trivia question who the professional Polynesian player of the year was in 2023 and mm -hmm. if you don't know that you should be ashamed of yourself. I'm going to take a big, big wild guess, and it's going to be Tua Tonga Vailoa, who has well inspired a generation of Polynesian players, uh, just like the Junior Seas of the world inspired maybe his generation and, and the Troy Palomalus. I mean, these guys are heroes to their people. And, you know, Tua is working on that second sleeve, Tua is really big into his heritage and culture, and 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 it's it really inspiring, and and I'm so happy and proud of him that he's in Hawaii throwing, um, throwing his first camp in Hawaii, um, yes, weekend, which we will discuss. Yes, we which will we discuss. Yes, let's bring him a happy birthday shout out to Raheem Mostert. Happy birthday, Raheem. One of the coolest guys in the locker room. Um, a guy that you want your your daughter to date. Um, that that's that and and your your son to make best friends. Like he's he is it that ultimate guy. I I personally believe that Raheem will ultimately you know those guys where you're like, that guy's gonna be a coach. You when you're when you're covering him, when you see him, when you interact yeah. with him. Like I knew Hartline was going to be a coach. I knew Michael Thomas was going to be a coach. Like Michael Thomas could fight it as much as he wants, but his future is in either coaching or politics. Brian Hartline's already, you know, assistant head coach at at at, at Ohio State University was offensive coordinator. I'm not sure if he's still offensive coordinator now um, because of the Chip Kelly edition. But Raheem Mostert, he's got coach written all over him and i would not be shocked if he's on mike mcdaniel's staff by the time he's done the only thing all the caveat always with players is when there are children involved he's got three young children i want to say and that's what like for example zach thomas was like poster child of somebody who would make a great coach but he wanted no part of it because he wanted to, to spend time raising scouting too and scouting and executive because i've actually yeah. talked to zach thomas about being a, a, a scout executive in yeah zach but but there's a difference with zach because zach never needed money and so he never let money motivate him um whereas raheem i just actually just looked at raheem's deal raheem hasn't made enough money to survive a lifetime if he invested well enough, he should be okay. I mean, yeah. I, I don't know. Uh, anyway, uh, sad for Raheem that his alma mater, the basketball team at his alma mater, couldn't give him a great birthday present. Monday night, Raheem went to Purdue. They got spanked by UConn. No shame in that because UConn was quick, very basketball thought. Uh, UConn, easily the best men's team this year in South Carolina, was easily – the best women's team for all the hoopla about Caitlin, Caitlin Clark, which was justified. She's a hell of a player, but great team defeats great player all the time. So let's discuss now. Let's get into the meat of the Dolphins. We said Tart to a Tehran. We're going to start with Tart because it's the most recent player acquisition. I don't know about you, but I love this signing. Low risk, high reward. Um, Yeah. Another guy where he's some, even got some character questions or concerns. Um, I, What, I find very interesting about this offseason. And I'm not arguing that they could not afford Christian Wilkins. I, I, I saw a guy in my elevator. Uh, I was strangely enough wearing a Miami Dolphins shirt 
Um, it just so ha I do not wear a lot of Miami Dolphins paraphernalia. Sure. I do not stop stop that. Um, it was a it was a Miami Dolphins three hundred five shirt that they did not have for sale, and I had harassed Jason Jenkins for it because it was only given to staffers. Jason Jenkins, rest his soul, um, got me one because Jason Jenkins was that type of type of dude. Um, I, I, people know I love 305. I'm a Miami guy. I bleed 305. I've actually got it tattooed on my body. Um, and I needed that shirt and I wear that shirt proudly. And anytime I wear it, I wear it in memory of Jason Jenkins. Um, who's, who's an amazing, who was an amazing man. Um, and he saw me in the elevator and he says, that shirt should be say Raiders. And I said, I was oh. like, yeah, he, he's a Raider. He, you know, he was, he was one of them Raiders Nations people. Yeah. And, and I said, I said, how you feel about Christian Wilkins? He's like, yeah, good player. That's a lot of money. And I said, you damn right. That's a lot of money. That's a, that's a whole lot of money for a good player. Um, And, and I said, he's, he's a good guy. He's going to help your team get better. Like, is he going to be a finishing piece? No. Um, so getting to my point. Um, yeah, more, no, more Christian Wilkins slander coming from me. He he will eventually find me. Um, <laughs> be, care, be careful because we know what he can do. Yeah. I mean, I had Jordan Phillips looking for me, so I, I, I'm not scared of Christian Wilkins. Um, Jordan Phillips and Jakeem Grant. That was that was a tough one. I would have fought him, though. Um, uh, seven guys to replace Christian Wilkins and Raekwon Davis. Seven. Tier Tart, Deshaun Hand, Benito Jones, Jonathan Harris, Neville Gallimore, Davion Nixon, Isaiah Mack. Mm -hmm. Like, how many of those guys do you actually think makes the 53? Four. Four? Mm -hmm. you get, you're putting five DTs on the 53? Because it's not going to be the same as last year when it was Zach Sealer and Christian Wilkins pretty much the entire game. And unless you're, you re, you really need to blow. Okay. Come take, take a couple of plays. I'll get your ass back in there. I don't see it like that. I think Zach Sealer is going to play last year. I think is what is it? 84, 85% of the defensive snaps. I, that's not happening again. Um, and my take on Tart and the issues that he dealt with, and this came from a story on ESPN from, former All Dolphins podcast guest Teron Davenport was he was in a contract year, got a little pissy about the playing time he was getting. And then the team got, he would, was not happy with the effort and attitude. And then they basically released him toward the end of the year, despite the fact that he wound up having to eight tackles for loss. And I did the math and his eight tackles for loss came in like under 400 snaps Christian Wilkins had 10 tackles for loss and 890 snaps. Sealer had 11 tackles for loss and 830 snaps. So the ratio was by far much better for Tart, uh, who's a really good, quick defensive lineman against the run. Um, now he's it's a one-year deal, so now he's again in a contract year. You would hope that he's learned his lesson about copying an attitude if he's not getting the playing time he wants. Even though he's, I mean, hold on. We we know they play games. Don't well, play like NFL teams don't play games, dude. If the guy's making making a tackle for loss, I think is one every eight snaps or something. Like that. No, what? Once Are you every. Saying eight. an NFL teams play the best players all the time? Not all the time, but they're, they're also. You seem to think, and I I fight back with you on this. NFL teams are not gonna cut off their nose to spite their face. They are. No, they don't. Especially when they're tanking or rebuilding or or trying to invest in the young player that's going to be here as opposed to play the guy who's entering free agency when they got young draft prospects that are inferior to you, but they just want them to play so they can grow and develop and progress. Come if on. It's somebody you, if it's somebody you want, you, you, you're going to go like this with, then that's fine. That's one thing. And he might have been that player they were going like this with. Well, maybe. And then they eventually, yeah, maybe they decided in the middle of last year he's not coming back regardless, although they didn't know they were going to undergo a coaching change. So, Or maybe Rand Carthon, the new GM, maybe already knew he was going to hire a new coach. He would have no use for Terry Tart. So maybe. The other part of it is, again, maybe he was – 
copping an attitude for the wrong reasons. I'm not a defensive tackle. Let's not pretend that they're not divas at every position. I mean, let's, let's get. Oh, started. hold on, wait a minute. Can I come up with a diva at every position? Now, this will be a fun podcast. Um, kicker, maybe that'd be tough to find. Huh? Kicker might be tough to find. Uh, a diva defensive tackle. Okay, we got Sue. That's an easy one. Um, have we ever had a diva at inside linebacker? Okay, Carlos Dansby. He was a diva. Um, outside linebacker. Who's our diva? No. Uh... Cameron Wake a little bit of a diva. Oh damn, Cameron Wake is a little bit of a diva. Um, we got cornerback diva. Cornerback. Yeah. Uh, that one's that. That one might be a little tough. That one might be a little tough. Yeah, I think you. I don't. I don't think you got one. Oh, uh, is Jalen Ramsey a little bit of a diva? Okay, let's move on to safety. Um, by the way, this is Omar agreeing with me. And I didn't I'm say not, I agree I'm with you. I did not it. say I agree with you. I have no comment on the subject matter whatsoever. Then let me ask you directly: Do you agree with my comment? Let's go on to safety. <laughs> um, <laughs> Your Honor read. instructed the witness to answer the question, <laughs> understanding that being a diva is not necessarily a bad thing, because number first of all, you have to be you have to have a certain level of ability to be. To be even in a position to be a diva. Come on, Omar. It's not. Rashad, Rashad Jones was a diva. Okay. You will just completely jump over. I am not touching it whatsoever. <laughs> at, at some point, it, it because, because listen, everybody will say everything. And you know what? And I might just say the exact same thing everybody says. You know who they're going to have a problem with? It's this guy, and it's not fair. But that's it's not, my, that's it's, not that's not true. Come on. Oh come oh, on. Sorry. Uh, who do they call? Who do they call out? Like nah. Christian Wilkins said he has a clause where he doesn't have to answer questions for me. You're the only one because you're the only one who was taking shots at him. I was not the only one who was taking. That was not fair. That's not accurate. D don't do that. I was not the only person questioning whether he could, should have got a multi-year extension. I was not the only person. Okay, so, said, for, the so the, for the record, Omar Kelly agrees with me, Alan Pupar, on the fact that Jalen Ramsey, Ramsey has a little bit of diva in him. Okay, safety. Defensive. Uh, <laughs> offensive line. Did we ever have a diva at offensive line? Um, I, and I will not allow Richie to be put into that category. Correct? No, that was, yeah, that was, no, I wouldn't classify him as a diva. Um. I don't think so. Again, let's start off with the fact that I understand that it takes a certain level of ability of the player, and then obviously a little bit of the of the attitude as well. Um, so, if you're looking like like Teron Armstead's far from a diva, Laramie Tunsil was far from a diva. Mike Pouncey, I didn't, I wouldn't certainly. That's wouldn't, a dog, not a diva. Yeah, yeah. correct. Um, Jonathan Mark, Mark, Colum Mark Colombo, because he didn't want oh, to Oh, damn. We do have Mark Colombo. Mark Colombo does fit into the diva category. He was a diva. He did not want to talk to the media, but even though by that point, his one year with the Dolphins was not particularly impressive. He was horrible, which is why it puzzles <laughs> me that he is like considered one of the best offensive line coaches in the NFL now, because I thought he was a disaster. Remember, those who can do, those who can't teach. I am not having that discussion. Okay, so we're we're going back. Let us we're, we're going around. Tart to me, I think I we haven't seen the contract numbers. I'm going to guess it's probably not for a ton of of money. Drew Rosenhaus said on his weekly spot that he took, I believe the term was considerably less from the Dolphins than other teams. Also understand Florida has no state income tax, so Holy an offer. Zulu. No, that's 2023. Okay, yeah, he made 4.3 million in 2023. I doubt he's going to get that here for Miami. No. Correct. And understand that dolphin money would be – it takes less dolphin money to equate what he would make for, say, the Bengals. Or I believe his Minnesota was very interested, and there's another team that was very interested. I I think it may um, have been. It was Cincinnati. No, Cincinnati no. Cincinnati for a visit. I don't know if they were in – Cincinnati were, and Minnesota. Cincinnati, no, Cincinnati and Houston. Houston wanted to re-sign him. Okay. Um. So, yeah. It, 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 he clearly had interest from other teams. We'll see how it pans out. There are seven guys here trying to vie to be 
Raquan Davis and and Christian Wilkins replacement. We'll see how that all pans out. I don't know. And I'll I'll say to me he's the one with the highest upside. And pretty clearly. All right. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh next we will go to Tehran. Okay. Who not only flew out to Hawaii along with Jalen Ramsey to participate in Tua's football clinic in Hawaii over the weekend was a guest on NFL Network where he talked about his decision to come back, also talked about his optimism and uh, fighting back a little bit at Deion Dawkins' statement that Buffalo owns Miami or something along those lines. As far as the retirement, um, the thing that was interesting there is he kind of clearly does own Miami, though. Oh, I'm not debating that point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Had a point. <laughs> but interestingly, about the retirement stuff, is he said basically that's wasn't the first time. It was like the past two or three off seasons he's thought about it. This was the first time he actually kind of said it publicly after the season, and that's why it got some publicity. I wrote a story about it for si.com slash NFL slash Dolphins, where I kind of suggested. Uh, and tell me you can you can tell me if you disagree with this. I would be surprised if this was not his last season. I definitely expect it to be his last season, unless his body just absolutely undergoes a a metamorphosis and and transforms, and he stays relatively healthy for a full season. But he's battled knee and I think maybe back. Knee, and, you know. Yes. He, Answer is yes. He's battled. Yes, back. yes. He's battled. He's battled a lot of things. Um, I think he loves football and I think he plays it for the right reasons. Um, at, at, at some guys put a dollar value, you know, I've been around age. Once you get to the double digits, like you're playing it for the love, you're not playing it for the money, but there is a certain line that you won't cross to, to, to play the game. Like uh, for instance, I looked up um, uh, Kendall Lamb's contract because Kendall's going into his 10th year. And Kendall signed a deal for $2.5 million. And while I think that's a little low, if I'm going to be honest with you, because as I've always pointed out, if you're going to give Dan Feeney $3 million. Dan Feeney taking strays again. It's like, you might as well give it to Kendall Lamb too. But he knew exactly how much he was willing to work for. And 2.5, I guess, was his line that he drew. And he wasn't doing it for the minimum. Um, and, and understand there's a lot of, and this is one thing that I learned when I worked with I am athlete, um, and, and actually, you know, managed athletes, they put a lot into the game to get ready for a season. They put a lot into their bodies to get ready for games. And it's not just, it's not just time, it's money, it's, it's treatment, it's diet, it's healthcare, and they pay the toll for it on their bodies. Every year that they play in the league, especially in the trenches, that's taking years off your life. And like, you know, the aches and pains that these guys go through when they play a car crash, they're in a physical car crash every Sunday and then have to work their body. Like, did you know the defensive linemen like get uh, trench players and star players? They get like three massages a week, like mm-hmm. three massages, chiropractic work just to get it to game day like you know i would love three massages a week but you know my body doesn't need it but their bodies need it so um i think teron knows the toll that this game has put on his body and as long as they're contending for a title like maybe if they contend and fall just short he might come back for one more year but if he's having fun he's going to continue to play but you know he does have a dollar value that he wants to continue to play for Correct. And this is where we we mentioned the fact that they, they redid his contract as well. Uh, by all reports, he took a haircut. I think to $8 million. Um, He's got no guaranteed money pass this year, and they tacked on two of what Omar absolutely loves, void years. So that's another reason why it, it very well might be his final season. Uh, and the other part of the story is he was asked about all the moves around the AFC East, particularly with the Bills and all the big name players that they lost. Jordan Poirier, Micah Hyde, Tredavis White, Stefan Diggs, Mitch Morse, and I forget others. Uh, the Leonard linebackers. Floyd, Leonard Floyd. 
Mm-hmm. Look at you. Will Dotson. Look at you. How about that, huh? And again, so a whole bunch of players. And basically, Armstead's deal was like, couldn't care less. We're not worried about any other team. It's all about us and elevating our game and playing the way we need to. It's true. And it's a message that he's had all season. Um, and unfortunately for them, they, they, you know, and I know people will say that their excuse is, but they ran out of gas at the end of the season in terms of players. They did. They signed four senior citizens as pass rushers to make it to the playoff game. So, and yet it wasn't a defense that was the main culprit in the playoff game. Okay, we move on. Our final topic today is? To a day. To a. And so it starts with the football clinic. Is the first one he did in Hawaii. And by all accounts, everybody had a good time. Um, as, we, as I mentioned before, joined over there by Jalen Ramsey and Teron Armstead. Armstead made the point to say that Tua – Flew out to his camp in Illinois last summer, so it was only fair, you know. Uh, and besides, who's going to turn down a trip to Hawaii, right? Um, and then while he was there, Tua was asked a couple of interesting things by the uh, local reporters there about his contract situation. Yeah, he and- should be giving exclusives to Hawaii reporters. That's the, okay, bro. Like that's home base. They love you. Yeah, they weren't. They weren't exclusives when they put it. When once they put it. I mean, they all, they all have it first, and we, and we all credit them. Those of us who use the comments that were said there, the comments came from them was KHON2. See, I'm, how's that for proper credit? KHON2 in Honolulu. Um, KHON2 in Honolulu. Exactly. So talked about and also his offseason workouts and Tua was not giving details. All didn't say exciting times ahead. Uh, but as far as what he's doing in terms of offseason workouts, despite the reports that he's working with what's a group 3D QB with John Beck and Tom House, he was like, no, not saying. <laughs> what's that look you got there? I got no comment on the workouts. Um, okay. Nah, uh, I've already taken enough hits on the John Beck fan club. So um, well, you, can, you can mention the workouts without taking a shot at John Beck. Here, I have an idea. Mention the workouts and take a shot at Dan Feeney. That way you can you, you can address it. <laughs> that's that's funny. Uh, uh, I like. I don't. You know, the thing is, he intentionally put on muscle to bulk up to be able to handle the the battering nature of his position last year and i guess and i'm just theorizing here because he won't address it um he'll eventually address it with us he know, you know he will he will uh, um and you know he got questioned and criticized for being thick and i mean he was thick before he even put on the muscle i think that's you know to his thick like but, but do what, you think that's why he was he wants to get leaner, or be, was it because he noticed a difference in his mobility? He noticed a difference in his mobility. But here's the thing: Do we really want a mobile tour? Do you want a mobile tour? Do you want a scrambling tour? No, because that's never going to be his game. I would like him. Here's the thing: is, and you have to strike the balance. And and if I if I can address this, the reason Tua was able to stay healthy boiled down to a couple of factors, and. If I have to, if I have to hear that it was because he learned how to fall, okay, that was maybe a tenth of it. The, yeah. the other factors, I would were, give it the exact same percentage, a tenth. I mean, the other factors. Maybe I go to twelfth. He was indeed thicker, and he wasn't as easy, with all due respect, to ragdoll in the pocket as he had been before. And then number number two, he also was a lot better at getting rid of the ball when the play was dead. You also saw him give up on plays and slide in front of defenders a lot more than he did before, where sometimes, if you remember the play against the Jets, even though it was against the DB, but he still lowered his shoulder and ran into a, ran into a Jets defender, which he didn't do. Um, and then also, maybe it was time that the, the luck was on his side. So you combine those were all the factors. Offensive line was a little better, too. Sure, but I mean, he also got rid of the ball very quickly, so th- that helped. Uh, but you have to strike the balance of 
do you, I, ideally you'd like them to be a little bit more, more more mobile to be able to extend plays a little bit longer. That's fine, but she, that's not going to be his calling card. His calling card is going to be quick decision, accuracy, getting the ball up. Yeah. Um, now, now obviously we're going to Tua Vic. We're creating Tua Vic situation here. He's going to be a scrambler now, according to everybody. Um, I, I he's leaner. The, the whole point is to get your body in op- optimal shape in the off season. Um, he, you know, you know, it, maybe, maybe in his mind, he, he developed a little bit of a dad bod. He didn't, but you know, off season is the time to, to fine tune it. And he definitely looks slimmer based on what I've seen. But you know, when I see him in person, it'll, it'll be, you know, a bit more evident, but also, I like that dope tattoo, that second sleeve. We're, we're, we're sleeving up both arms. Think about Tua. This will soon become the most tattooed quarterback in the NFL. Who would have known? Who would have thought? Any, are, they, are there any other heavily tattooed quarterbacks in the NFL? I'm sure somebody's heavily tattooed. Cap used to be, but I don't remember anybody else. Who? Kaepernick? I don't remember. I, don't, I can't recall anybody else. I don't. Um, not, I that don't it, know. not that it matters one bit, by the way. In yeah, case I'm, I'm pretty sure Lamar Jackson has tattoos, but okay. I, I wouldn't like, you know. Uh, like, um, hey, Brock I, I, Osweiler I, I, had a dope tattoo. Who? Brock Osweiler. You don't remember that one? I, I try to forget Brock Osweiler. Yeah, he had his name tattooed on the back. He had his name, like his jersey name, tattooed on the back of his 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 uh, his, uh back. Um, which was what are you talking a, about? At a great training camp, I, he might have had his number too. No, he didn't have his number because he yeah. you can't never can be consistent with the number. So yeah, you remember my reference, by the way. You were there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm. By really, the way, the, 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 the references, so I'm not leaving everybody in the dark. Is Brock Osweiler when he was there was 2018? I want to say was brutal in training camp, and our good buddy Adam Beasley asked phrase a question very politely, something along the lines of. What can you do to turn things around in training camp or something along those lines? And also I'm looking at him like dead serious. What I are you think, talking well, about? Well, I've been, been really good this training. I'm very happy. With him. And all of us were like, what the hell are you talking about? Yeah. Anyway, we digress. Um that's like Bra- that's like Brady Quinn saying he was throwing interceptions intentionally. Yeah. I'll never let it go, Brady. Never. I see that. But let's blame that on Dan Feeney. It was Dan Feeney. <laughs> Sorry, Dan, wherever you are. We're just doing it in good fun. Any closing thought, thoughts, Omar? I, I think I'm... Um, he also talked about his contract, which we know, you know, he's going to leave it to his agent and he's going to focus on his family this offseason. And, yeah, players... I, I, you know, I saw somebody on Twitter that I follow. Can't remember the name. I wish I would have gave him a shout-out. He's, you know, maybe he's kind of a Dolphins of relevance. Okay. Um, but he said he wanted everybody to put a date on when Tua will sign his contract. We'll get it. Would get an extension, and you know what my date would be? Go ahead. Saturday before the regular season opener. Whoa, interesting. Okay, interesting. I mean, it's going to be a talking point all throughout the off season until they do it. What's Miami's motivation to do it other than to take care of their quarterback? I, I think there's only two reasons that you signed to a tongue below to an extension. Um, one, you get a deal that's favorable to you. Mm-hmm. Or two, you know that you need to use that franchise tag to retain Javon Holland. Because you got to sign one of the two. You got to sign Holland or you got to sign Tua this offseason. And my question there would be, if you know you're going to eventually sign him, which basically would stamp the idea that you see him as a key, if not the key to the franchise moving forward, and they why, would, why would you leave that hanging over his head until the, the, the start of the regular season? He left it hanging over Christian Wilkins' head. Okay. Again, but that's you're talking a quarterback and the de- defensive tackle. If you're If the Dolphins already have decided, no matter what, it's just a matter of finagling the money and – getting him at the deal we want. If they've already made the decision, no matter what, we're signing him to a contract extension. That's the key. That's that's your key guy. What, the about, what about if both sides are far apart and Tua wants a 
Justin Herbert deal and you want to pay a Kyler Murray deal. And to me, oh, that's yeah, that's fair. If I'm I'm not I'm not paying to a Kyler Murray makes forty six point one million dollars a year mm-hmm. on his existing contract. Got one hundred and sixty million guaranteed. Five for two thirty. I'm not paying that. I'm not paying more than that for Tua. And I don't care what your peers are making. Like, that's the price point that I put on you. And it nobody's going to shed a tear for you ever because you're going to be the highest paid player in Dolphins franchise history. You're going to double what the next guy makes. And, yes, you're a great name and 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 you you sell jerseys and you sell merchandise and you sell season tickets but have you won us anything that's we my can, that's my line but don't I, you don't you think you're stealing my line he's like he's like you leave me nothing to argue here like, no I'm, not, I'm just gonna play interviewer here but <laughs> then don't you think it's there might be some hesitation in playing a game of chicken again with somebody you've identified as a key to your future. Then I just tag you next year. Okay. And I mean, we're playing the long game and the long game doesn't benefit you because you have injury history and you're trying to get to this $160 million in guaranteed money, as opposed to doing it year to year, 23 now, 38 next year. We we're good. And you'll be compensated, and th- this falls into the Alan Poupard plan, which is drag it out as long as you can. And, you know, it might benefit them for cap space later down the line. But truth of the matter is, they don't need it now. You get Xavier Howard's money on June 1st. Right. You made it through the whole offseason. Now, it might prevent you from signing one major guy that can help you. But, hey – Throw some void years onto another contract and you'll be good. <laughs> there you go. We love we love those void years. No, you know, throw you know, some more void years on. You know, my master plan is you play on the fifth year option and we'll revisit next offseason. That's but uh we shall see how that plays out. So on that note, we're ready to wrap up. Yes, sir. There is nothing to wrap up. You know how to find well, you don't know how to find us. Um, but they do, they do. si.com slash si.com NFL Dolphins. Um, that's where you find all our work. Um, we'll figure it out. We're still working on it. Um, we will be all right. We'll be all right. But you follow us on Twitter. We send out our stories there. There you go. Um, and on that note, we are out and we will see you tomorrow. Mañana. Mañana. Hasta luego.